Good to see Pete Lowe as well, as always. All right. Hey, well, Happy New Year. I hope it's still appropriate to say that. Uh, sorry for anyone. I did get a couple of emails. People jumped on last week. I've got a little trigger happy. We're so organized before Christmas. I, you know, I thought I don't want to work while I'm away on holidays. We're going to Canada and I preloaded an email to be sent to launch next uh, last week. Sorry. And then sure enough, I uh, got the COVID in Canada and a three week trip turned into a five week trip, was, which was actually phenomenal. Um, had the best time. And I tell you what, if you're going to get COVID, you may as well get it while you're staying with your parents in law and with your, you know, your aunties and uncles around. And there were just plenty of hands to look after the kids. And there was about three families. We all had it together. So we all basically just stayed together and all the toys came out. Uh, so we were snowmobiling around the yard, with, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So it wasn't a bad way to lock down for a couple of weeks and, and enjoy. And, you know, we would sleep in and the kids would get up early with the grandparents. And it was, it was a good COVID scenario. So I feel very fortunate to, uh, to have COVID under the circumstances in which we did. Um, so it's good. It's, um, yeah, but I uh, hope everyone had a fantastic Christmas new year and it's really nice to see everyone so um yeah and apologies for anyone that did jump on last week but uh yeah uh shout out to simone who's in sydney visiting from uh well down here from brizzy hope you are having a great trip to sydney simone great to see people uh getting out and about interstate again and uh yeah really excited for this year i mean obviously a really really significant time for our church uh, I got back, my first day back was Sunday and sort of, you know, came in and, you know, found out about big changes when you guys did, but uh, thoroughly excited and excited and believing that uh, we are going to be in the best season. It's going to be the best season for Pastors Brian and Bobby personally, best season for our church. Uh, I came through the youth ministry under Phil and Lucinda's leadership and, uh, you know, that had an impact on me for decades upon decades. So I am really excited, really excited, and really excited to be doing life with all of you guys. And uh, as I've just spoken to a few people this week, it's just reminded me again how uh, how strong our church is, how strong this community in our church is, uh, uh, our business people, people that feel they're called to, um, you know, make a difference through their, through their work, through their career, and including many of you guys that are our kingdom builders. And uh, yeah, excited, excited for the year ahead. I know we did have to, uh, apologies while I was away, you might have also seen we'd organised uh, some of our, the girls in Sydney to get together uh, down at Barangaroo and our venue closed the door on that thanks to Omnicron. So and a gift that keeps giving, but uh, we're, we're going to revisit that. And I had a few people reach out asking about that. So keeping it to the ground, we'll be getting that going as soon as um, you know, the venues are working with and everything permits. So um, really, really excited. But yeah, a lot of great things happening. We're going to keep this as a backbone to all we're doing this year. Just, I think that that consistency and that uh, touch point is key. I mean, I was thinking Sophie Raff mentioned before, she's she's completing year 12 this year. She's only got three terms to go. And I thought, gee, when we started doing this, Sophie was in year 10. Um, so that was kind of funny. And I'm like, oh man, we need to find some more students to jump in, Sophie, because in uh, just a few months, you're gonna be, uh, yeah, you're gonna be out of school. And um, uh, really great. Look, a couple, couple of things. And then I'm gonna hand over to Andrew and he's gonna, he's gonna, inspire us and invest into us this morning but a couple of things that just wanted to make uh, I guess mention is we do have groups that meet personally I mean namely uh, up there in Newey I know they were as of last year I'll speak to John and and the guys but uh figure out what they're doing but they're meeting uh, every uh, every month at least in person which is great so if you ever passing through a Newey or or you're part of maybe you join online from Newey but you haven't been gathering with the guys do that the groups here in North Sydney I know Mary uh, gathered a few people late last year. It was a bit hit and miss, I think, with COVID and coming into Christmas, but to meet in person. And she's committed to doing that in Sydney, as long as people that are willing to gather there. So that was at St. James, uh, downtown Sydney. And look, even here in the hills, um, I'd love to get, you know, love to get a group meeting in person as well. But obviously people need to be up for it and, you know, people need to <laughs> be up for helping facilitate that. So chat to me if that's something you're interested in doing. Uh, one thing to mention is that I think it'd be great. You know, at the moment we only have one 10 a.m. I know everyone here isn't necessarily from Hills and they have one 10 a.m. service uh, at the moment. So great opportunity to, in the mornings, that is, uh, great opportunity to do breakfast or lunch before or after, you know, some of the business community if, 
if that's something people would be up for. So again, just a couple of ideas that you know might be great ways to connect in person around this, uh, but we're gonna keep this as, uh, as a staple moving forward for the time being, uh, as I've always said, until it, until it stops working. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, just looking through, seeing, seeing everyone and really, yeah, from Liam Glover up there to Andrew Beveridge, and, See Jurgen joining from the Esplanade, and so many, so many people that are that I know and love. Timmy Aquino, um, uh, Sarah Eshu, Mick Stevens, Gus. I can see Etienne Hugo as well. Heroes. There's so many, uh, so many people that just makes yeah. Um, I can get distracted looking through everyone, but um, hey, uh, I'm just gonna throw straight to Andrew. Obviously, it's become a bit of a tradition. Three years running, Andrew Andrew launches these for the year for us and. Uh, it's obviously not by coincidence. It's, it's very intentional. Uh, Andrew just uh, carries such a such a weight um, and such an authority in this space. And look, I don't really, in many ways, I don't mean this at all disrespectfully. But almost don't need to introduce Andrew because he's so so well loved and admired. I often say when people come on here, uh, they'll you know to share, and I'm surprised we'll get people from all walks of life. And often I'll, I'll find they'll thank me for having them, and then they'll honour Andrew. And I think that's so fitting in every instance and Andrew you we appreciate you thanks for uh thanks for getting us kicked off for another year oh thank you Dan it's um definitely uh my, my privilege and an honor to to help start 22 so uh welcome everybody to Business Connect 2022 I, I still amazes me uh the amount of people who I've spoken to have said that the best thing that's come out of COVID has been this Business Connect. And, um, you know, it's been fantastic for people, not just across Australia, but, you know, as we know, people across the world who just look forward to this connection every week. And so um, it wouldn't be the same without you. So I hope you're all continue to, to connect in this year for sure. So I hope you all had a great Christmas break. Look like... Dan had a great had a great break, and um, he he definitely got away somewhere. So hopefully, hopefully you got away somewhere. Um, who else caught COVID? <laughs> Probably lots of people. Um, I had all the symptoms, but didn't didn't get a positive. So that's fine by me. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was it was great to finally get away a little bit. So that's so good. Yeah, some, definitely some pretty big news for those of us who call Hillsong Church home this last weekend. I got to tell you that I'm pretty excited, though. I'm actually I'm super excited about having Phil and Lucinda as the new global leaders and maybe a little bit selfish in that they'll be based at the Hills campus, which is my campus, too. Um, as Dan said, I've known Phil and Lucinda for well over 30 years. Um, he was my son's John O's RDG leader, and you know I got to, I just got to know him very well. And I've been to Hillsong, South Africa, quite you know a few times now over the years. Let me tell you, they've built a phenomenal church outside of Australia. Um, the Hillsong, South Africa, would be our strongest campuses across the world, no doubt. And um, these guys are the real deal. They really are. They're the real deal. And I know that they're going to bring a real freshness to our church. And one thing I'm particularly excited about is Phil is a big believer in kingdom builders. He really is. And uh, he knows how important the role that kingdom builders play and will definitely be needed in rebuilding what COVID has stripped from our churches these last two years. You know, I get to speak to a lot of pastors around the world uh, from outside of Hillsong uh, all the time. I've been blessed to have formed friendship with these pastors across the globe. And every one of them, every one of them is talking to me about revival. They really are. And it's coming. But every one of them is also talking about it starting with the individual. Okay. Starting with the individuals in their congregations they themselves getting a revelation about getting back to the basics of their faith and that their personal relationship with Jesus will be the key to influencing their family, friends, and neighbors 
and thus kicking off the revival. You know, with so little time spent in church buildings the last two years, people have either had to step up and take responsibility for their own relationship with God, or no doubt it's gone backwards. <laughs> you, you can't, there's only two choices here. It doesn't just sit there. If we just sit still, we're atrophied, you know. When I look around the auditoriums and I see empty chairs, it tells me that a lot of people have become comfortable, comfortable in their new situations of not attending church. And can I tell you, it's where the devil wants people to be, comfortable. <laughs> comfortable is no threat to the devil. You know, their Sundays, you know, uh, to themselves these days and their own desires. And unfortunately, God is no longer first in their lives. Can I congratulate you, though, even for just connecting to Business Connect today? Shows me, shows me that you want to make that choice. Shows me that, you know, we know that life is just a series of choices. And choosing to put God first is the most important decision of all. So as we start off the year, I want to bring us back to the basics again. Now, I know some of you are already thinking, I've heard this before, true, yeah, but are you doing them? How are you doing them? My research tells me that most of us aren't. Most of us aren't, so I'm going to go over it again. So if you've heard it before, well, that's okay. We've got to repeat these things because we don't often do them, all right? So here's the first one. Are you reading your Bible daily? I mean, seriously, are you reading your Bible daily? I'm not asking you to read for the sake of reading. I love I loved to read. I read 12 books over the Christmas break in probably only about two and a half weeks. But I read for enjoyment, a little bit of motivation, but that's not what you read the Bible for. The Bible's like no other book. The Bible is God's word. The Bible is direction and inspiration for your daily life. See, when you pick up your Bible, okay, I want it to be with an attitude of, God, I have an expectation that you're going to speak to me today. Not tomorrow, <laughs> today, from my reading of your word. And, and I'm not going to stop reading until you speak to me. That's a, that's a big decision. Now, I know that that's possible. Why? Because I've been doing that for years. So if I can do this, <laughs> you can do this. Can I encourage you? Start by getting yourself a reading plan, okay? I'm even going to tell you the one to get. It's easy. It's called The One Year Bible, all right? <laughs> it's very simple. The One Year Bible. It has a bit of Old Testament, a bit of New Testament, Psalm and a Proverb. Every day keeps it interesting. See, when you have a reading plan, that's one discipline that's already in place. Okay, the decision about what I'm going to read today is already made. That makes it simple for you again. Okay. So for some of you that need you need that because you you procrastinate too much. What am I going to read today? What am I going to do? And so you don't read anything. Okay. But just start. Just start. And a good place to start is to pray something like this. God, please speak to me today from your word. That simple? Yeah, that simple. I think we can do that, can't we? God, please speak to me today from your word. And can I encourage you? Don't get all religious in it, okay? Meaning, you know, you don't have to read the whole daily reading. If God happens to speak to you in the first chapter you read that day, for instance, fantastic. I was actually having back look through um you know my recent uh messages I, I sent out from wednesday the 19th of january until sunday the 23rd five days i just camped in luke 12 just luke 12 i didn't go any further I didn't read any more and god just spoke to me daily just from that chapter now there's been days plenty of days when i've had to read three and four days worth of the readings before I got my verse. But my question to you is this, how much do you want God to speak to you? I mean, really, I think the fact that you've got up early, 
on a Thursday morning to connect into Business Connect. Not always as early as Addy did over there in Bali, but <laughs> you got up early. Tells me that you want this. I, I know this. God does not want to hide from you his word. But sometimes he wants to say, Andrew, are you prepared to dig a little deeper? All, all I know is, for me, it's not a it's not a want to, it's a need to. Okay. I need the Holy Spirit. You need the Holy Spirit to guide your steps daily. Not once a week or only on occasions when I'm desperately in trouble. Okay. We're all in trouble. We always go to the Bible, don't we? We're in trouble. Every day you need God to guide your path. Every day. And there is no better guide book than the Bible, full stop. True, true. See, what I'm, what I'm trying to do here is to get your spiritual eyes, okay, our spiritual eyes open to seeing where God wants you to step today. Simple as that. I want your spiritual vision, vision, okay? My, my natural vision hasn't been that great. I've had, had my lens replaced in my right eye so I can actually read better. <laughs> But my spiritual vision needs to be so good so we can see what God wants from us and what the devil wants, okay? Because there's a very big difference. And the devil is very good, okay? He's very good at deceiving you, okay? Can I tell you, can I tell you, the moment you, the moment you think that you've got this all together, put in brackets there, pride, is probably when you need it the most, all right? Maybe you think you've got all this together. I'm good. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm hearing from God clear. I'm, I'm good as gold. Probably when you need it the most. So practically, how, does, how, do, how do I do this? Practically, when I find my verse daily, now I'm, I, I read my Bible on this, okay? I like this. Why? Because it's with me 24-7 almost. So my Bible's with me all the time. Uh, I believe the... Paper Bible is romantic, but um, this one's functional, okay? Um, when I find my verse, not the verse today, my verse, first thing I do is highlight it. I highlight that sucker. Then I copy it. Then I send it to others. Then I send it to others. Why is that? Well, the first group I send it to all, always is my direct family chat. I mean, if God's speaking to me, Man, the first people I want to share it to is my loved ones, obviously. Okay. But then I also then share it to a group of around about 60 people across the globe. They get sent it as well. I bold the point in the verse that have jumped out to me. And I usually just write a short thought at the bottom. Very short thought. I keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Why? Well, firstly, I want people to read it. <laughs> If it's this big, long expose on the verse, trust me, people aren't going to read it. I won't read it. Secondly, it's easily duplicatable by anyone. I'm explaining this to you today. Why? Because I want you to do the same. I want this to be, become an easy part of what you, what you do. I don't, want you to, I don't want to ask people to prophesy over 10 people every day and what God has spoken to you. No, no. Just share a few words few thoughts to a couple of mates who will help to keep you accountable. It's that simple. See, being accountable is a good thing, okay? It's a good thing. It'll help to motivate you, especially in the beginning. See, I know, I know at least 60 people in the world know I haven't read my Bible today if they didn't get a verse from me. <laughs> that's, that's part of motivation. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, it's also there to help you encourage you because what will soon become a, what was a want to is no longer a have to yeah you know, i i can't wait and i mean this i can't wait to read my bible every day why because i'm excited for what god's going to speak to me about today because i know he is why because he spoke to me yesterday and he spoke to me the day before and he spoke to me the day before so it's really really simple people make a decision today Today, I'm going to start. Okay? So if you haven't got yourself a, a Bible reading plan, just start one today. And just start, just start to send 
your verse to a couple of people. This really is that simple. I started many years ago with two mates. They thought I was a weirdo at first, but after a couple of weeks, they realized, hey, Andrew actually reads his Bible every day. Those two, those, those two, two guys are still part of my 60, and I get verses back from them as well. I get, here's the cool thing. I get verses sent to me from across the world. And, and it's an amazing thing when we can have God's word spread across the world. So everyone got that one? Number one, read your Bible daily, okay? Number two, you all know what this one is. Pray with someone daily, okay? Now, this doesn't mean you don't pray by yourself. Like if, uh, if you're anything like me, we're praying all day. There's always something to pray about. But praying with someone else is a game changer. If you're on here today and you're married, I am going to super encourage you to pray with your spouse every day. Did I say every day? Yes, every day. Okay. If you're single and a male, find another bloke to pray with every day. If you're female, find another girl to pray with every day. Did I say every day? Yes, every day. Why, why is this so important? Well, the Bible tells me in Matthew 18, verse 20, where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. There I am with them. Every day, okay, every day, you want to put yourself in a position where you're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you, either via your spouse or your friend, okay? When this becomes a daily practice, God will attune your spiritual ears to hear from him clearer, okay? He, he will. He'll, he'll, make, he'll get your spiritual ears clearer. Can I ask you this question? Do you want to be able to distinguish between what God is saying to you or what the devil is trying to confuse you on? Hmm. I know it's a simple question, but remember I told you before, he's very good. He's very good at confusing you. But when, when you put a, when you'd be better by putting yourself in a position daily where you can train yourself to be an expert at hearing from God, okay? Be an expert. Because times will come when you're going to need that skill and you want to get it right. <laughs> you want to get it right. Allowing yourself to be transparent and, and vulnerable with someone else will give them permission to speak into your life. And if you see yourself going off track, well, I've got to tell you, people, that's gold. That's gold. If you don't have that, okay, can I encourage you, make a decision today that you'll start on that. Make a decision. So important. Those of you who are married, you know that your spouse doesn't need permission to speak into your life. <laughs> but if you're single, trust me, you need that person. Once again, don't be religious about this. Doesn't mean it needs to be a 30 minute prayer with tongues and an interpretation. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know three guys who call each other on their way to work while driving. They talk through the issues of the day from the day before, pray for each other, 10, 15 minutes, all done. What a great way to start the day. What a great way to start the day. And I can tell you, some of these guys, I, I speak to them, I'm actually thinking of these guys who are actually in England. <sighs> Man, they contact me. Their life has changed. Their life has changed forever just by making this decision to pray together every day. It's, it's radically changed their lives. Really has. Husband and wives, when, when you pray together, whenever it suits you, okay, whenever it suits you. But I do know that this, your wives will always want to talk first, men, okay? <laughs> and, and, that, and that's actually a good thing, Okay. That's a good thing. My father was calling me across my iPad at the time. Sorry. <laughs> um, I will talk to my father after. All right. So is that pretty clear, guys? Find someone to pray together. Please, husband and wives, make, make the decision to do it. Okay. Um, and you know those days, ladies, when you still love your wife, but you, sorry, love your husband, you just don't like him that much even on those days. In fact, probably especially on those days, okay? 
make the decision. We got to pray together. Don't let, don't let the devil have a win. Don't let the devil have a win. It's so, so important. So, so important to get that in place. All right. Number three, number three, and, and we'll, and we'll wrap up there. Put plans in place. Put plans in place. All right. Start to talk and discuss your dreams and goals for the year ahead. And can I encourage you, please write them down. Please write them down. This is such a huge topic in itself. Vision, vision. What does Proverbs 29 verse 18 say? Without a vision, people will perish. I know that COVID the last two years has thrown so many people's plans out the window, mine included. But don't let that, that, that disillusion you. Don't get comfortable. Please don't get comfortable in the rut that you're in now. See, that's the problem with ruts. We don't realise we're actually in them until we're actually in them. And then it gets a bit hard to get out of them. <clears throat> you know, 97% of the people in the world just let life happen to them. 97%. Only 3% of the world actually plan their future life. <laughs> Decide today to become part of that 3%. Don't live your life reactively. Live proactively. I can encourage you. Start to dream again. Start to dream, dream again. As I said before, COVID has, has given everybody a bit of a punch in the guts and it's been a bit tough here. So start to believe, okay, start to believe again that God's plans for you are above and beyond what you can ask, think, and imagine. That's what God's word tells me. That's what God's word tells me. Above and beyond what you can ask, think, and imagine. But you have to start. The ball is in your court, people. Okay, it's your decision. Okay, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't try and blame God for where you are today. <laughs> There's only one person you can blame for where you are in life today, and that's you because of the decisions you've made up to this point. But the great thing about that is you, you can decide how to change that. With God directing your path, with greater spiritual eyesight and spiritual hearing, you too can live a blessed life that you thought was impossible. Honestly, some of you would think it's impossible. I often, I mean this, I often have to pinch myself when I look at my life today, where it was previously, and to know that these three things that we just discussed here this morning have been the catalyst that have changed that. And I believe that the, the key for that is that I've decided that I want to hear from God. I've decided I'm going to put God in first in my life. I've decided I want God's will for my life. I've decided that I'm going to put him in, in my plans for the future. I, I can only encourage you enough, once again, just back to these basics. Get, get into God's word. Start praying. Start praying with people intensely for what's ahead, start planning, dreaming again for, for, for 22. I, I believe the 22 to be a fantastic year. I'm certainly hoping to. I was hoping for 20 years, hoping for 21, but 22, I am believing that it will be. And so I, I pray that you don't just listen to me today, but you actually do something about it. Please make that decision to do something about it today. We've got... 15 minutes, and Dan, I'm more than happy to open up the floor to as many questions as possible. Anybody wants a question, feel free to ask me. Over to you, Dan. Just a quick testimony on, on, on sharing. I think fair to say I've probably heard that more than any other person walking the planet except you, Andrew. Um, going to churches all around the world and have sat next to Andrew as he's asked those three questions. And I would tell everyone that there is a direct and strong correlation to the quality of those answers. You'd meet people you've never met before. They'd tell you about their lives, 
hardly anyone answers yes to those three. But when anyone said yes to those three, their lives were totally different. And uh, when I was with Andrew at one particular time, I was in a bit of a career change, like sold the business and uh, thinking about doubling down on coaching and the, witnessing people's lives was so different. I just literally said, what's the point on coaching anyone? You know, God, do I just go around the world and use my time to ask these three questions? Um, you know, and I actually sat down and asked Andrew that as a, as a, as a bit of a mentor and, you know, encouraged me to kind of follow my strengths. But um, even sitting here, I've, I've heard that so many times, like this is real and a great reminder for me. Um, so just wanted to encourage that for people because it's sometimes maybe, you know, um, simple things are, are, are easy to roll off the head. But I think if we just apply that those items, I've just seen a fruit. So just wanted to share that as a testimony of hundreds of people, maybe thousands, like you walk in and they go, no, no, no. And they're like, oh, what's the keys to make my life better? And you give them the three answers and some of them believe it, some of them don't. And then I've been in a room when some people have come back and they've come back saying yes, yes, yes. And the turnaround's massive. So just a shout out uh, and a testimony. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. I think that's the truth. I, I have <laughs> it, I have not just experienced this in my own life, but I've seen I've seen the testimony. I've I've been back to churches up to six times in the last eight, nine years. And I've sat opposite the same people that I've asked these questions to initially. And it is, it is true. Their lives are completely and utterly turned around, as mine was, by putting these things in place. Andrew, can you share that testimony of that couple? You met a couple, a married couple, and they were sitting at opposite ends of each other on the sofa, and then you met them a year later. Yeah, I won't, okay, I won't tell you where it was, because I don't want anybody to work out where it was, but I was... <laughs> I was doing these one-on-one -on -one meetings and this, this couple walked in and it was in the pastor's uh, office and they had a three-seater lounge opposite me. They, they couldn't have sat further apart on this three-seater lounge <laughs> and um, they obviously did not like each other and it was pretty obvious and I asked them those three questions and, of course, they weren't doing any of the three. It was a fairly quick meeting and it was a little bit depressing and I, I wrote in my notes wow, um, these, these, these three, this, this couple, they, they don't just like each other, they hate each other. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know what's going to come from this, but boy, I hope they listen to me today. And um, I happened to be back in that church. It was only about eight months later, wasn't even a year. And um, you know, I had this, all these meetings set up again and I looked down the list and here's this couple on the list. And I thought, oh, okay, this is going to be interesting. And this time I was set up in a different room and I only had um, individual chairs. They were expecting a couple to come in. And with this couple walk in, firstly holding hands, it's a good sign, and, but they also come in with their 15-year-old son. And um, so I said, oh, look, I'll, I'll just grab another chair. Bang, the wife's sitting in the husband's lap. She's not a winner in another chair. She's sitting in his lap. I'm telling you, she is all over this guy, right? And... <laughs> I turned to the 15-year-old. I said, mum and dad getting on better? He goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I said, guys, tell us what's happened, you know? The wife just jumped straight in. She says, Andrew, you know, eight months ago when we came here, we, we were not getting on. I said, oh, really? I hadn't picked that up, you know? Um, <laughs> she said, yep. She said, life was terrible. Um, she says, but we started praying together every day. She says, we haven't missed a day in eight months. She says, everything's changed. The husband chirped up, he goes, everything's changed, you know. <laughs> I said, that's awesome. Now, I remember actually, one thing I do remember from the previous meeting was that the husband had been in the same job for 23 years. And I'm going to tell you, he hated his job, but he was still there. And so I said, what's else happened? He says, I quit my job. I said, wow, that's huge. He said, yeah, yeah, we started business. And he said, we actually work together every day. We couldn't stand being in the same room together, but we now work together every day. I said, how's business? He says, fantastic. So you haven't played challenges yet, but God's got it. So that's awesome. I said, so what's the, what's the go with the 15 year old here? And he said, 
Well, when we found out a couple of weeks ago that you were coming back, he said, our son, let's call him John, said, I I'm coming to that meeting. I need to meet the guy that helped change my family. So he, he turns up and he goes, he says, I listened to you last night. He says, I want to be a kingdom builder. He's 15. So I turned then to the couple and said, here's the most important thing that you did. It wasn't that, you're, that you just turned your marriage around, that you turned your, your finances around, all those things. What you did was you gave hope to your son. Who knows what he will do? Hopefully he won't go through all the dramas you went through in your life. And at 15, he can get an understanding that he wants to be a kingdom builder and move forward. So that's just one testimony. I, I could tell you testimony after testimony of the changes that these three things will make in your life. Who's got another question? It's quite Dan. Guys, can you hear me? It's Mary. I think my camera's off. Go, Mary. We got you loud and clear. Um, I'm in the car. I've just dropped off Reese and I've just picked up Lexi. Um, the four of us met at Business Connect in the city at St. James. And uh, when, when church shut down, we started meeting on a Sunday morning for church by Zoom. We would Zoom everyone in. And then uh, we started meeting together and praying every morning, Andrew. Thank you yeah. for you. And every morning at 7.30, we call each other and we pray. And um, we've just become almost like besties. It was Reese's birthday today. We just went many for coffee. And um, I'm now dropping Lexi at the airport. We're just, we've, we've just formed this really beautiful, close friendship. I'm so grateful for it. Um, but it is changing our lives. We used to call it, the, the group chat used to be called um, Breakfast Club. But we all decided that we want to be millionaires so that we could be giving into the kingdom. So now the group chat's called the Forbes list. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Mary. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, and you, you've already experienced about how important it is. And here's the cool thing. You'll never, ever stop it. No. I've, um, I've met people who are single when they started this and they started meeting, you know, and praying with, you know, other, other people. And then they've got married they're praying with their spouse, but they still continue to pray with this other group as well. Why? Because it changed their life. They're never yeah. going to let go of them. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's been fantastic. Yeah. Andrew, I've been listening to all the old BizCons over the, over the Christmas break, and I was listening to yours about how you have your goals on the inside of your shaving cabinet. <laughs> and it occurred to me that you don't shave. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought to myself, what's he doing for 10 minutes in front of that mirror? And I thought... Uh, maybe he's doing his hair. No, uh -huh. maybe he's grooming. He's uh -huh. a good looking guy. Maybe, maybe he spends 10 minutes grooming in front of that mirror. No, I'm just teasing. That's all. Yeah. yeah. I thought did occur in the goals. You can definitely put, you can not good looking. Where you can read them. You've got to put them in a place room. Don't put them in the bottom drawer. You've got to keep them somewhere where you can see them. You know, very important. Very important. That's it for me, guys. Just wanted to share. It's been really powerful and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Bro, don't let that last comment get to your head. No one else agrees. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never been accused of being good looking, so. <laughs> Fortunately, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> uh, hey, listen, guys, it really is simple. I understand why there's not a lot of questions because you actually understand it. And, and can I just, just encourage you, please? Don't look for an excuse. Just, just start it. Start it today. You know, and if if you go five days and you miss a day, don't don't, don't get upset. Just start again. That's, a, that's okay. Just start again. But don't don't quit on it. Okay. It's it's too it's too valuable. It's too important, <clears throat> and it really is a game changer. So, you know, I, I let me. Let me just pray and then we'll wrap up. Hey, Dan. Father, I thank you for all the men and women here today on Business Connect. I thank you for their lives, Lord. I thank you for who they are and what they represent. Lord, I pray that you give them the, the discipline, give them the want to, give them the how to now, Lord. We just pray that they make these 
decisions to take these steps to put you first in all their life, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the testimonies we're going to hear in the future. We just pray, Lord, as they go today, you'll bless them in their work and their families. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thanks, Dan. Sensational, Andrew. I think, uh, you know, if you have the ability, maybe just chuck an encouragement on the chat for Andrew. That was sensational. You really never graduate from the fundamentals, do we? And um, I don't know, you fired me up, fired me up for the year. Similar to Pete, I've heard you share that numerous times, but it doesn't get old. And yeah, it gets in your spirit. And uh, yeah, I'm fired up. I'm, I'm ready. I'm, yeah, that, that was sensational. So I appreciate you, mate. Thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, yeah, so good. So, so good. I've got to admit, um, even just having it, because I, I took on that habit of about four or five years ago, having a group of people I send a daily verse to. And it's even that thing of sometimes I'll be in bed at night and I'll be like, oh, I didn't read my Bible or send a verse today. Like, I don't want to like let everyone down. So I get up, I do my daily. Like, it's just that accountability of like, just having that there is, it's probably made me read, you know, it's meant, meant of, there's been multitudes of days I haven't missed just for the fact that I don't want to like lose space and like try to send it. Hey, sometimes you miss a day or two, not a biggie. You just, you just get back on the horse, but um, love it, Andrew. Sensational, mate. Hey, uh, great to see everyone. It's going to be a great year. It's going to be a really good year and excited to be uh, doing this year in, I guess, in community with you guys. If there's anything we can do to help you, serve you, set you up for a win, reach out. Please don't be a stranger. Um, yeah, love it. We'll be back next week. But uh, until then, really look forward to seeing you in church across the weekend and wherever you meet him, pray it's a good one. Let's, uh, let, let's, let's put in this year in such a way that we're believing for each and every one of us and for our church, it's going to be the best year we've seen yet. And I think that's often determined on how we approach it, what we put into it. And uh, I'm, I'm excited for that. So thank you guys. Much love to you all. Thanks again, Andrew. Have a great uh, end of your week and we'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah. God bless everyone. Have a great day.